On this episode of Performance TV, we're showing you more uses for the AP Laser. Kathy talks to our friends at Truck Claws, and then we leave the studio and head to Houston, Texas again. We'll be talking coatings with IA Coatings, and Extreme Polymer rounds up our trip. All of this and more next on Performance TV. Welcome to Performance TV. We've had a lot of really cool things on our show, but the one I got really excited about was the AP laser. It'll engrave well, practically everything. We engraved everything from a valve cover to a pair of socks. So I've been joking with my buddy Kyle here from AP laser. Will it make me some money? It won't make you money, but it will make you money. All right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that, that's good enough. But we hear all about 3D printing. I mean, right. that's all I hear about. 3D printing, 3D printing, that's the future. Right. But you're telling me the, the laser will do more? Absolutely. The, the AP laser is going to give you that one-stop engraving shop, uh, literally from the cradle to the grave. So as you kind of see here, we started out at birth, birth announcements, up to birthdays, awards, donation bricks, retirements, even to the passing. Right. So if I want a casket, I can have it engraved with an can, AP laser. We can do that for you. One of the things I like about the AP laser, it, you know, if you go to the mall, you see a little engraved place. Right. But they can't do something big. No, it, The no. AP will do really big stuff down to the peanut with my right. name on it. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of those guys, what they're going to, again, be kind of limited to that small, lightweight stuff. Where the AP laser really shines is when it's going to allow you to branch out to those different larger items, too, where you can still do those small things like those peanuts. But, again, you can do the large things um, like we talked about before with the fender flare, uh, the toolbox, those types of things. Right. Now, now what about materials? What, what kind of materials can we do? What, pretty much basically anything, right? You name it, yeah. So, really, anywhere from glass, rubbers, plastics, metals, woods, papers. I mean, the list is long. So, I'll tell you what. Kathy has found somebody that has taken all the advantages of AP laser and put them to use. Yeah, Tommy, we have Michael here with us from MD Custom Engraving. And Michael, it's just amazing all of the things that you were able to do with your AP laser. Yes, AP laser systems is amazing. Uh, you can engrave on practically anything and any surface from woods, acrylics, glassware, riding lawnmower hoods. Yeah, what's, it, what's with the, the riding lawnmower hood? Well, when you want to be personalized and you want to stand out from your neighbors, come to us. We'll personalize anything that you bring to us. Bring out that, that inner special personality that w comes with everybody. You know, we have a lot of personalized gifts here that, you know, for hard to buy for a person, really special memories that you can help create, but a lot of uh, branding too for someone who's looking for that for their business. Yes, we do uh, business, commercial, and industrial. I know guys are really into knives, and girls too, but I see you've done some pretty cool stuff on the knife. Yes, same thing. If you want a personalization on knives, uh, other things, uh, we can do that for you. So we have metal. What you've done with, with the wood, is that like a mother of pearl? Yes, that is uh, a cedar with mother of pearl inlay. Well, you know what, it would have been nice to have had this uh, past holiday season when we were taking all of our dishes over. I would have known this was mine because you know why? It was done with the AP laser. <laughs> yes, once again, personalize your baking where you'll never lose a dish again. All right, and if we want to find out more about what you can do for us with your AP laser, where can we find you? You can find us at www.customengravingogden.com. Hey, Michael, what do you got going on back here? Let me show you. All right. He's been cooking up something in here. You know you have that thing going. Wow, check that out. Even on a felt hat like this. That's pretty cool. It is pretty cool, but wait. Check out this. How did you know? How in the world did you know my nickname? <laughs> <laughs> that is really, really cool. Thank you so much, Michael. Just amazing, all of the really neat things that you can do with your AP laser. And Tommy, I know you're jealous. That's all mine. Well, Kyle, the AP laser is truly cradle to grave, isn't it? It absolutely is. And I got something for you, Tommy. I know you were asking me about it, making money and whatnot. Well, <laughs> my own money. I love it. I don't know where you're going to be able to spend it at, but I mean, it made me money with my fa I didn't know I was a president. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. I like it. I'll tell you what. I'm going to go to the bank and see if they'll take this thing, but we got to take a break. So if I'm not here, you'll know where I'm at, in jail. <laughs> 
uh, cars is 1966 Nova. I've owned the car since April 2003, so roughly 12 years. Uh, it's got a pump gas 598, big block Chevy in it, power glide. I first bought the car in April of 03. Uh, friends of ours thought we paid too much money for it, but we saw the, a really good foundation, a really rust-free car to start with. Uh, it took about five years to build the car. Before building the car in its current condition, I drove the car to high school. It had a nice you know, small block with a four-speed in it. So the car's made many different transformations over the last 12 years and uh, it's been like this for the last five years. The, the, the engine's a 598 uh, big block Chevy, and, and trying to put an engine that size in the, the engine compartment that small is actually a bit of a job. I had to hand make an oil pan, I had to make custom motor plate mid-plate mounts, uh, I had to notch the uh, shock towers to actually get the headers to fit. The uh, front radiator cover and air cleaner is a handmade uh, piece out of 50 thousandths aluminum. A lot of people think it's fiberglass. Uh, it's got a lot of unique shape. It was actually an influence from the uh, Detroit Autorama in 2009. The steering wheel is actually an original piece. It's actually an original metal flake wheel that we restored. Uh, they make aftermarket wheels that, that are very close, but just not the exact same piece. The seats in the car are jazz race buckets that we actually made a stock configuration pattern for and put the stock Chevy 2 medallions in them. I wanted to give the car kind of a muscle car feel, but yet have the race car fundamentals. We'll be back with more Performance TV right after this. This edition of Performance TV presented by ARP is being brought to you by IA Coatings. Over 50 years of experience in the performance coating industry. Tire stickers, creative dynamic expression. Hunter engineering, state of the art wheel aligners and wheel alignment machines. And by ARP the world leader in fastener technology. Welcome back to Performance TV. You know, we're always interested in new products and especially when we see ones that have all kinds of awards and that's what we have here today, Truck Claw. And Brent, what exactly is this product? Well, Kathy, Truck Claws is a uh, new innovative traction aid constructed of a steel cleat with a slot going through where we have a customized ratchet strap and you feed the ratchet strap through the slot goes through the hole in the rim, feeds back through the mandrel in the ratchet, and just tightens down on the wheel. Okay. And it's designed to be installed simple, quick, and effective to get you unstuck from mud, snow, ice, and sand. Wow, and I, I see we have it on a you know, big semi-tire here, so, and this is pretty small to be able to you know, carry it in the truck or, or whatever, but it's gonna do a big job. Absolutely, it's really amazing, produces amazing results. We've moved loads, uh, gross weights of 80,000 pounds through mud, snow, and it really is truly effective with just one on each side of the vehicle. Okay, is this something that is, I see one side's a little bit bigger than the other. Yeah, it's designed so the, the smaller cleat leads in the direction the wheel spins and the smaller cleat comes and swipes the sloth out of the hole and then the taller cleat digs in and gives you the grab to propel the truck forward. All right, well, we see that we have some here for big tires. I wonder if we have something for our passenger vehicles, and let's go over here and check it out. Well, hey, Mike, we see the truck claws here, but this product got its start from the Zip Grip Go. Yes, it did, Kathy, and uh, it was back in 2013 I invented this product, and um, a lot of the judges came up to me and said, can you get something that will move a semi? I kind of laughed and said, there ain't no, I don't know how much steroids I put in this. There's no way it's going to move a semi. But it gave me the thought to think of the truck claws, and that's how I got started. And we saw the one that goes on the big semi-tire, yes. but what about for the passenger vehicles? Yes, well, um, start off with this zip grip go. We're going to show you how just how quickly and easy this product goes on. You can do it for two ways. Obviously, always check to make sure your brake calibers and everything is, is clear. But you're just going to put it in. This is my favorite way to install it. And this is made for your Priuses, BMWs, Toyotas, and stuff like that. And it literally, it's just that easy. There's nothing simpler to, to whip up a bunch of these and put them on. And, and that's, that's it. And I don't see where these are directional or, or anything. No, you can go forward or back and reverse, and that's really it to it. It's that easy to get you out of your problem. It's, a, it's not a reusable product, but it, it costs a couple bottles of water. But the truck claw is a reusable oh, product. Oh, yes, it is. I'm going to show you how quickly this comes off, too, and this is just that easy. So you're, you're stuck. Just pop them off. Get on your way. Call the wife. Tell her you'll be home in a few minutes. Yeah, or call the husband and say, honey, I, didn't need, there you I go. didn't need your help. So that's really all to it. Okay, what about the truck claw? The truck claw is an amazing tool. This is my baby, and this is the one I carry with me every day. If you notice, the truck claw has two 
um, different size cleats. There's a smaller one and a, and a taller one. The, the smaller one is going to go in the direction you want to go to get out of. And it's just really that simple. You lay it up on top. You take your strap, feed it through the mandrel, like so. And I see we're not going to have any problem if we have nice wheels or whatever because you've got something to protect. protect it. Yes, we do. So we just put it on that way and just crank it on as tight as you can get it. And that's usually all you need right there. Now, in most cases, this is all you need to get out. 95% okay. of the time. We've gotten in some deep sand or something like that or a rut. If you need to add on extension, we've made this little bar that gives you an extra 10 inches of traction. Mike, where can we find these? Well, you can get on our website, www.trucklaws.com, and we're offering a special to the performance viewers today. You'll get a kit of two truck claws for $149 and our semi version for $229. Okay. You just type in in the, in the discount code, Performance TV. There you go. You can find out all about it, like you said, on the website. And we are going to find out about some really cool stuff. We're going to hop on a plane, go to Houston, Texas, when we come back here on Performance TV. Time now for the OPGI restoration tip with George Lopez. This week's OPGI restoration tip is wheel opening moldings. Huge part, people love this, they need it for their uh, restoration, and there is also a lot of tips and tricks to install these. The first one I will always recommend, especially if you're going to install this on a painted car or previously painted car, is tape. Tape is your best friend, last thing you want to do is scratch your car. There's a lot of sharp edges on these things, so you don't want to, you know, sometimes it might take you one or two tries so you get it right, so you don't want to put any damage on your paint. So use tape, it'll always be your best friend. OPGI makes these parts to original specs. We use NOS pieces to mold after, so all these body moldings are gonna line up to your car. Once you line that up to your car, you wanna use a punch or, or an automatic punch and mark your holes. Or you can make it easier and just mark it with a felt tip marker or something like that. Remove it, pre-drill your holes, okay? You never wanna start drilling a hole or start screwing a screw with this on the car because most likely it's gonna slip, you're gonna damage the molding or worse, damage the paint on the car. So you remove this, pre-drill the holes, make sure they're gonna work with your screws, test all your screws out first, then you mount the molding on and screw it in, and it, trust me, it eliminates a lot of uh, headaches. And that's this week's OPGI restoration tip. We'll be back with more of Performance TV right after this. The Performance TV crew has headed to Houston, Texas to visit IA Coatings. Welcome back to Performance TV. We've hopped on a plane. We've headed south to Houston, Texas, and visiting with the folks at IA Coatings, Larry, the National Sales Manager. Larry, you work, do a lot of stuff with the general public, but you also coat for a lot of big contracts. Yes, we have, we're big in the oil field. We have aviation contracts. We've got uh, Department of Defense where ITAR certified. Wow. Yeah. So. Well, well, of course, I'm going to be big interested in what you're doing for motorsports. And we deal with a lot of heat uh, with, with racing and, and everything else, but you guys have some coatings that can help us out with that. Right. We have a high temperature ceramic coating that protects from the heat. And we're seeing that with the, the head we have here that is uncoated, right. with the head that we do have coated. Not only heat, but we want to make sure that we're keeping the lubrication going, and that's something right. that we're seeing here on this crankshaft. Yes, we have a oil shedding uh, coating on this crankshaft that uh, keeps the oil and parasitic drag off the crankshaft. So, so what would this be based off of? The, the coating itself is it like a Teflon type. It's coating? a Teflon type type coating. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And, you know, not only with wanting to keep the lubrication going, that's going to take us right over to the guns that we, we see over here. Now, now, these guns have been coated with a, a couple of different coatings from IA. Right. We have a high temperature ceramic on the outside. We have some uh, Teflon type fluoropolymer coatings on the inside to, to, to keep the uh, lubrication going. Now, were you mentioning to me earlier that this one gun had been shot? It was like how many rounds? We have one that's been shot 2,000 rounds without any oil. Wow, and that's just because of the coating just on the inside. Just because of the coating. Well, I'll tell you what, some of these very same coatings you're going to find on pistons, and to coat a piston, Tommy has more on that. That's right, Kathy. We're going to coat the top of the piston, and we're going to show you how that's done step-by-step -step process. And I'm with Jesse, the production manager here at IA Coatings. And Jesse, the first step would be consult with the client, find out what kind of coating, what their needs are, what they're trying to accomplish. But once you have that decided, you get the part into the shop, what's the first step you're going to do with the product? 
We're going to take it over to our vapor degreaser where we've got a chemical that's in there that's actually aerospace approved that will clean and help get rid of some of the carbon and other crud that might be on, on the top of the Right, you need to start with a clean product mm -hmm. so that all the coating is going to stick. Now once we leave the, the cleaning, what, what, ne what next step will we have? After it's done cleaning, we're going to put it in an oven and we're going to actually degas it. It will help open up the pores of the metal to get rid of any impurities that might be inside the, the metal. Right. If there's a, actually anything left at all, you're going to get rid of that the next step. Mm -hmm. Once we've got a pure product, it's, it's clean, uh, like a piston here, you're going to have two different types of coatings. You're going to have to tape something off? Yes, we are. After it's done degassing on the pistons, we start with the skirt because they're going to get coated with the, the top down, so we don't want to scratch the coating that's on the top. So we're going to actually put a tape around the ring lands of the piston and then we're going to head over to the sandblaster. Right, and the, the different metals you do different processes. There's also another process in there for different metals that you might do. Mm -hmm. There is. Um, for different metals we may have to take it over to a chemical bath after it's, after it's sandblasted and there's different grits of sandblast material depending on what coating, whether it's a ceramic or if it's a Teflon anti-friction coating or other uh, proprietary finishes. Yeah, I mean, and once we got it all clean, everything's ready, we've got it taped off, where do we go from there? After it's taped and, and sandblasted, then it will actually get uh, untaped and brought over here to the spray booth, and then it will get taped up uh, clean with clean tape and then put the coating on and baked in and oven. Right, because you don't want to sandblast the wrong surfaces you're going to coat. So now we've done the final tape on this. We're ready to spray it? Yes, we are. So we head to the spray booth. Mm -hmm. Now this isn't a spray booth I thought. I thought it would be enclosed and all you know, covered up. Explain to me how this works. So with the booth that we've got here, it's actually got a one-to-one -one air intake and exhaust. So we've actually got a fresh air intake that takes air from the environment and not in our shop and then has an exhaust. So no, none of the air that's actually in the shop will actually cross the, the invisible barrier. Yeah, I was going to say, it's almost an invisible curtain mm -hmm. here. It, now once we've got a dry, complete product, is there a quality control assurance we go through after that? There is. It will go over to our quality control manager where he'll use a dry film thickness gauge and he'll actually check what the film thickness is on the skirt and the top to make sure that it's within the specifications. All right, so it comes out of the oven. We've got the finished product. We got the, we got the coating on the top. Now you know we have coating on the side. You got a finished product. I'll tell you what, this piston is going to run well. It's going to protect itself with the right coatings. You need to check these out. We'll be right back with more Performance TV. This week's fuel for thought: How do you store properly and legally? fuel at home, at your shop, whatever, your race fuel. And Dan is with us here from Race Gas. Dan, people may not think about all the rules and regulations of keeping your fuel at home. That's true. And uh, you don't want to find out the hard way. You bring your 55-gallon drum of high-octane fuel, you throw it in your garage, the house burns down, and then your homeowner's insurance doesn't pay you because you are illegally storing a large quantity of high-octane gasoline. You don't want to find out the hard way. No. The rules and regulations in Minnesota, where I live, um, we're limited to 20 gallons of fuel that we can store at any given time. It has to be in five to eight gallon cans. They have to be stored in a place where they're a relatively constant temperature, away from heat sources, away from your furnace. Yeah, so a lot of common sense things on top of actual rules and regulations. That's correct. All right, you want to find out more? All you have to do is hop on their website at race-gas.com. And that's this week's Fuel for Thought. We'll be back with more Performance TV right after this. This edition of Performance TV presented by ARP is being brought to you by Cargo Glide, flexible cargo management solutions. Custom Auto Sound, the originator of classic car OEM fit radio since 1977. Extreme Polymers, experience extreme performance. And by Steel Rubber, quality crafted rubber parts and weather stripping. Welcome back to Performance TV, continuing our visit here in Houston, Texas. Get a chance to check out IE Coatings, but now, Frank, we're going to check out EXP and what you can do inside the motors, inside a whole bunch of stuff, keeping it running cooler. That's right. We had a great, uh, great introduction for the product last year on the, on the Performance TV, and we're, we're great, to, great to have you guys back here with us to talk to some of the racers that have been using the product now for close to a year, and it's been received really well by the racing industry. You know, and I'm, I'm not only hearing about the engines running cooler along with other parts that you're able to add it to. What's this about a little horsepower? That's right. We have uh, a lot of drag racers that have been documenting uh, horsepower gains on the dyno. Uh, it varies with the type of motor, but um, most of them see between 4 and 10 horsepower, so it's, uh, it's been pretty exciting. 
The, the product line that I see on the table behind us, not just for motors, but there's a lot of other uh, stuff you can add it to. That's right. We have products for the for the uh, gearboxes, anywhere differentials, manual transmissions. We also have an automatic transmission treatment that's specifically designed for automatic transmissions. How much of this would we use, say, on a, a small block? I mean, is there a, a certain amount we're supposed to be using? Small block, roughly uh, a quart for, for most small blocks will, will be sufficient. Our racing treat, our racing formula is actually a little more concentrated, so you have more of the polymer in there, so a quart usually would treat most engines fine. So, Frank, we see a lot of stuff with racing, but what about some offshore applications? That's right. Uh, we have a lot of the offshore race boats here in Houston that have been working with the product over the last year. Uh, have seen dramatic reduction in their engine temperatures, increased RPMs, uh, really helps these engines out a lot. And we want to find out more? Go to our website, extremepolymers.com. There's a lot of great information on there. We have some dyno sheets the, from some of the dyno testing that's been done. There's also great information about the new polymer we're working with. All right, well, we're going to find out more with what Tommy has next. As you can see here, we've got a great variety of vehicles that really look good, but they also perform. Let's catch up with them and find out how EXP1 worked for them. My drives are cooler, and I can tell that from the uh, just looking at them when I when I take it up out of the water. There's no white calcium buildup on it from heat. It uh, really increased my horsepower. My bike runs cooler, faster. I like everything about it. The AXP1 has an increased horsepower um, just because it's an extreme pressure concentrate. What we found is the engines are lasting longer, so we don't have as many rebuilds in the season. So it makes it our, our job a lot easier as drivers. Since using the EXP about, uh, say about a year, year and a half now, it's actually the biggest thing is just the heat reduction in those, the tranny and the uh, transfer case. I mean, there's no, no other way around it. I mean, there's Royal Purple, Mobile One. I mean, you, there's no other product you want to use unless you're using the EXP in your car. I don't know about you, Kathy, but I've had a great time in Houston. Uh, you know what, Tommy, it's always so much fun to go on the road. And we're going to do that again next week when we see you at Steel Rubber Products. Right now, so long from Performance TV here in Houston. Nice ride. Mine's bigger. Oh, I like mine bigger.